Florida Panhandle has always been a place that's piqued my interest. Growing up as a South Floridian, we hear stories of crazy creatures and entities coming from the Panhandle. The most interesting part for me was obviously the Bigfoot, the UFOs, and even the reports of the Dogman. I knew that eventually I'd have to go up there and figure out all these things for myself. And that's where I got lucky enough to meet somebody like Connor Flynn, who happens to be a Panhandle local. He was an Ohio native that relocated down to the south and has turned it into his base of operations. Uh, he actively researches places like Tate's Hell, Torreya State Park, Cheesy Pond. He's got tons of Bigfoot casts, heard howls, recorded howls, knocks, done tons of ghost hunts, sky watches. The dude's got his hands in everything. He's written books. He's been parts of local films. And I knew that when he invited me up there, it was going to be a really good time. And Connor was also nice enough to share with me for this film some of his evidence that he's been able to collect over the years. And some of the cool things that he's found and people that he's got to talk to um, in his investigations and just talking to everybody about this subject. You realize when you're an outsider going in that there in the panhandle this folklore is like common knowledge you talk to these people about you know the goat man bigfoot dog man ufos everybody's talking about it but you know when you're from the south it doesn't really seem that way down here hardly anybody talks about those things and, and connor's out there in the streets asking people every single day if they've had encounters and I feel blessed that he's been able to share some of that stuff with you guys for you to be able to see firsthand. Hey y'all, it's Connor from Bigfoot Anonymous. I'm with my buddy Jack scouting filming locations for our upcoming movie. And look what I found deep in a cave. You can clearly see the five toes and the mid-tarsal break. We are very lucky it's not a full moon tonight because we are at the location of the shape-shifting dog man. I interviewed a Native American man that was walking his friend home down this dead-end road late at night and he saw a creature curled behind a tree about seven feet tall. Shortly after, it made a noise and rose to the treetops, 30 to 40 feet tall. Its head was huge. And then it disappeared into a dot into the sky. Very interesting stuff. We are in Rodbender territory. Some of the locals here have some of the craziest stories. Giant crabs up in trees, skunk ape and the ground rumbling and trumpet sounds from the sky. Beware, be ready for a scare. Right here is the Henson House, Mary Anna's own haunted bed and breakfast. But the ghosts are said to be very playful and comforting. So if you're ever in the Panhandle and want a place to stay, the Henson House, B&B baby. Here we are in Mary Anna Cinemas, which has came a long way over the years. But one thing has stayed the same, and that is the ghost of Tommy. It is a very friendly ghost here of the Panhandle, and even with all the reconstruction of the theater, there is still paranormal activity here. A lot of the staff talk about things being moved and hearing strange noises. So I'm going to be looking for the ghost of Tommy. Let's get it. I am at the Marianna Airport because in 1955, one of America's still unsolved UFO encounters took place in the skies 
over Malone on December 6, 1955. A radar operator at Graham Air Base, now the Mariana Airport, observed an unidentified flying object traveling north across Jackson County at a high speed rate. Super cool. Show you guys these small planes right here. I am definitely going to talk to some pilots and see if they can take me up above so I can see what the extraterrestrials were spying on. Hey y'all, we are in a graveyard full of high energy. Also stories of specters, apparitions, strange sounds, and moving statues. Some of the little gnomes that are set up are said to dash from gravestone to gravestone. The angels are said to fly from sight to sight. And I have seen dashes of light beam from side to side. There's heat lightning and abundance of collected energy out here. I'm soaking it in seeing what is what under the stars. Mitch, I make monster movies. How are your movies a little bit of a monster of the mind? Uh, so my movies are less about physical monsters that we see uh, and more about the monsters in our head uh, and and circumstances that, that create the monsters. Uh, like, for example, Derelict is a short film I did in 2020, and uh, it's about uh, uh, Adam, who's, a, who's a, addicted to methamphetamine, and uh, the whole story is kind of about what, what the addiction has created. Uh, I guess you could say Adam is almost a monster himself, so uh, it's more psychological than, than physical. Very true, very true. Do you think there is a correlation between this drug use of the panhandle and maybe these monster sightings? Uh, it's very possible. Uh, oh, shit, man, you got me off guard. <laughs> Do I think there's an influence between... Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, dude. So the crazy stories you've heard growing up were yeah, coming yeah. from credible people, uh, you know, profess professional professors and uh, true respected people around, or was it hillbilly uh, people from the, the Mo neighborhood? Most of, most of the people who I would consider uh, addicts uh, don't really have a whole lot of supernatural stories. Most of the supernatural stories that I've heard growing up in the Panhandle, for example, uh, Skunk Apes, uh, Goat Man in Liberty County, have been from people who I would consider credible sources, They're definitely not drug users. And right there, you said it. Could you, could you please tell us a little bit more about the Teloja Goatman? Okay, so, and I have never seen Goatman myself, but I know multiple people who uh, have lived in a little community called Teloja in Liberty County, Florida. And supposedly, all of the, and all of them, all of the sightings have been around the same railroad tracks. Um, they say he's half man, half goat, and they swear they had, he's, he's been known to walk up to, uh, vehicle windows and, 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 and people have seen him there. Some people have seen him, uh, not in a vehicle out on foot and, and have ran away from goat man. So that's, that's, that's the extent of my knowledge on goat man from Teloja. Wow. I remember you were talking about a horror script that you wrote in the past. Was that influenced by any strange stories that you heard growing up here in the Panhandle? Um, not really from the Panhandle. No, this is more or less influenced by uh, the occult or or the uh, the the unknown. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. And uh, what other stories have you heard? Yeah, so River Baby is a story that I've heard from a friend. Won't say any names. And uh, basically, the story is that there was a an infant child that the mother didn't want anymore. And uh, she took him and threw him into the Chipola River uh, right here in Alta, Florida. And uh, at night, I don't know if there's any specific night, but uh, you can hear River Baby crying. And uh, I guess he's looking for a new mommy. Wow. That is definitely chilling. And I've been up there <laughs> at night. I've been a little scared. So pretty intense things. So we had just got back from filming our main documentary from Fear to Understanding. 
and Connor decided that he was going to take me around the Panhandle and show me all these different places. We went to Estos, we went to his hometown in Alpha, and all, all kinds of other places all around there. And the amazing thing about it is that there's one guy named Connor Flynn, and he just has all this information, right? And it was, a, it, it, was, it was crazy because our first stop on the list was Bellamy Bridge. And after experiencing all this crazy stuff in Alabama, it was just crazy. When we showed up, we get out of the car, we're walking down the trail, and we start hearing knocks. Nah, for Prince. Yeah, if I keep my eye on. Me and Ronnie recorded a whoop out here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, uh, it was on, uh, it was on October 31st, or like a uh, uh, full moon, or I mean a, uh, a blood moon. And, uh, I, I have it on my YouTube. It's like a 17 second clip. Oh, okay. Because I was recording with a GoPro for 45 minutes in the pitch darkness. And, uh, yeah, we recorded a whoop, and then after my GoPro died, about 20 minutes after, a tree crashed down, and then we ended up leaving. Mm. But Ronnie, he's always armed, dealt always a little nuts. Good person to have with you in some aspects, but sometimes it puts you in the harm's way, too. Like, sometimes, like, a normal hike like this would turn paranormal because he's so, he's so odd, you know? That's yeah, awesome. we're definitely paranormal. back down here in Florida. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One time I came here with the Walking Legend and some photographer was here talking about some super rare orchids. Really? Yeah, and he said they're like right off the thing, so you have to be careful. Very cool. Anaconda too, blood orchid, uh, all these anacondas in the middle of the jungle, they find this rare uh, flower that allows them to live longer. So they get stronger and bigger. That was the whole blood curse. Really cool. This is pretty cool. So what if the sacks you hear that? the alligator? Did you just hear that knock? Of course you're a bastard. You got it record? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully it's on the audio. Here we go again. and clicks right here at Bellamy Bridge, right towards the area that we actually filmed the Skunk Ape Experiments Bigfoot recreation scene. So really on a level of energy, what if that has created some kind of window or pocket that attracts creatures? Because a lot of people have thought and seen and witnessed and created their thoughts and energy all towards this area. Think it off here. That was definitely peculiar. Definitely. There it was again. Oh, yeah. I got to do it alone here soon. Because that really tests the boundaries. How much further is it? About halfway. Right up there. 
there is one part that it will get wet, I'm guessing, by looking at all this. So we're gonna have to get creative. At the Bellamy Bridge Heritage Trail. And sadly, it's really flooded, but we are still soaking up the vibes and the history here. Elizabeth Bellamy passed away on her wedding day and told her husband, I'll forever be with you. And still to this day, we see white apparitions and hear whispers all around this area. There have been Amazon Prime documentaries filmed here and tons of high level exploration from Stacy Brown to the Gulf Coast Paranormal Team. But man, right here is abundance of energy. We've actually recorded uh, some whoops, howls, and some tree cracks just today, but also in my early days of exploring here. And we also filmed the skunk ape experiments right here at the Bellamy Bridge Heritage Trail. Guys, we are in Esto, Florida, home of Two-Toed Tom, a famous fierce alligator that was known for killing mules, cattle, and even a young girl. They've been seen from down here in Florida all the way up into Alabama. They say this thing is 24 feet long and only has two toes so you can see its track and it's still alive today. There's a creek right through there. There's a good chance Tom or his descendants are near. Going in a cave. Probably should have brought my light. It lights up pretty well down here. Oh yeah, it does. Just watch your step. Someone was burning something down here. Yeah, sometimes they have stairs. Alamo Cave, they have found tons of Indian relics in here, arrowheads, pottery, old weapons. They think that they were actually taking shelter from a battle, that's why they call it Alamo Cave. And Tristan, uh, he actually casted a print. When this isn't all full, it goes down, down there a little bit, he did cast a small print uh, that was a bare footprint. But it is a pretty high yeah. traffic, you know, cave. I can also see a, a hiker taking their shoes off. But just the peacefulness and that warmth inside your head. There's tons of caves that go all the way underneath the city. There is rumors of people going underneath banks and underneath the courthouse. It is wild, man. A lot of cool dynamite stories and then cavemen being woken up from inside of rooms and stumbling out after 200 years and then just flabbergasted of new reality. I definitely think there's essence in caves and energy and just Middle Earth, the world beneath our feet. Absolutely. Right here is the Chipola River, hotbed for the Cabbage Man. There have been BFRO certified sightings right here and dozens of other ones coming from locals ranging from beds being found to aggressive things being thrown and being driven out of the forest me and donnie miller actually encountered something paralleling us right here in this area wild stuff after we went to the chipola river we got a call from our good friend donnie miller donnie miller runs a animal rescue called standing goats rescue out of Mariana, Florida. Him and his wife have all these animals that they take care of. And they're just all around great Christian people. And it was an honor uh, for him to invite us to come over to his house the following morning and not only just check out his house, but do a couple interviews about some of his encounter stories as well.
I could touch it, but I couldn't. I couldn't lock yeah. my hand up on it. But there was one there and one there. This one was clear. You could see the whole. So thing. like it was like put its hands on the walls and was looking through the window almost. Yeah. Well, this is the bathroom and our yeah. bedroom. This bathroom, I got it in the middle of the night, and that's but me and Rosie use this one. Our bedroom is right on the other side of this bathroom. Well, actually, right on the other side, but here. I came out, went to the bathroom, middle of the night. Everything's dark, so I didn't turn on the lights. Yeah. And I see, I think I see a face looking in the window. Hmm. Now, the toilet's right there. I'm standing at the toilet. The window's right here. And I got to look, and I could see it wasn't white. It was um, almost hay color. You know, that yeah. old hay was kind of a leathery, light brown. Yeah. But it wasn't moving. Oh, nice, nice. Last part that goes on the outside right there. And they're not designed to come off. They're, I don't know how they're put together, but they're, they're made, they're glued on. But you can still see where that one's popped off, but we never found it. Wow. And it's, we've, I don't know how many times we've changed them. And wind and um, weather would never do that. Well, we, we would have found it. Yeah, yeah, you would have yeah. right here. We never, yeah. Come on, Take Jeff, <laughs> Jeff had found the one down here. Because <laughs> over there, there's a big oak right there. It's got what? like a Delicious. little vine hanging on it. Yeah. Goat milk. Oh. It's delicious. That's it. That's honestly like taste. Did a little short video here checking mm -hmm. the goats, and I just walked over here to see. Because normally there's a sand hunt behind this oak. Yeah. There won't be no leaves on it, but you, you'll see very clear embedded footprints. I mean, it's, there's nothing else that makes a track for five goats. Yeah. The, the trail goes right there. That's where we got that night we come out. The eye shine was right here behind the tree, and then it disappeared. As I was coming across the yard with the flashlight, it was right down over there. And we got it clear you know, with the, the, yeah. the light on it. Right there is where the, um, it's got leaves on it now, but normally it would be clear behind that oak tree. Yeah. There's a, a mound right there, but the bark is picked like something's been either climbing, not all the way up, but just up, you know, probably this high. But it's like somebody sitting there just picking the bark up. It's weird. The tree's alive. It's not a dead tree. We're looking for tracks. We actually found two different tracks. They're both were smart, like a child. And then Jeff found that lens over there in the corner. It was kind of, it was weird. It was definitely weird. You can kind of, see how the baby's got wrinkles right here on the lips? Yeah. Uh, it had like wrinkles but going this way, like vertical. Yeah. Right down the side, it was just a, um, it almost looked demonic, but mm. then again, it looked fake. It didn't look real. No, it was moving. I mean, there was no doubt. It was, whatever it was, it was alive. But it just, I don't know, it was so strange to see something like that. It's not bad right here to start. Just watch the, the briars. But it opens up once we get back in. This, is, this was a trailing music because Louie and Moscow would always go over the fence. And so this is how I would get through. Watch your eyes. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. This was, I would walk this to get him back there. Louie's always got that. Bunch off, and it would be really dark. See, the 
stuff right here. The goats, they won't eat it. They will flake it off to get to the, the tissue of the tree. Right. But they don't eat that bark. But it's just strange how we you'll have the big chunks missing. See it right there? It's just like yeah. on that one side. You have to be at least eight feet tall to yeah, reach that. Yeah, the goats can't reach that. Yeah, I can't reach that. They, they could do this. Definitely. You know, very possible, but at the time when it was all right here, it just seems they, like a person. The only one to get out was Louie, yeah. Mm. To and there spy were no, on the house and the animals. So yeah, you know. this one, we got the eye shine was right here. Wow. And he, it was like he was watching. So me and Kim come through from right there at the gate with a light, and the horse is freaking out. And he, it was like he kept doing this, and he, he, he wouldn't even jump that quick. You know, he'd kind of slide out real slow when you get both eyes, and you see one disappear, and then the other disappear, like he'd slide back. When I got over here, there was nothing here. But you could hear him going through here. You know, the, it was loud. Wow. And there's, there's not much break. That goes right down to the waterway, too. Yeah. Do a perfect escape route. And this is... What's the name? Sorry. This is one This is before Hurricane Michael. This tree right here... All right, my trail went straight through there. This is where the trail is to get the goats in. Yeah. Before Hurricane Michael, this tree, there was nothing wrong with it. And it was just broken, folded over. It had all this broken stuff blocking my trail. I couldn't get through. And it hmm. was alive, so I couldn't move it. Yeah. I didn't have a saw at the time. So I ended up, I had to go back this way to go around. And we went back. And the last time I went back was when Jeff was there, like a year ago. The clock was over the ground. No man. I come back to the ones off, or the little ones. That's, we found the little tracks of the deer. And then Jeff, Jeff found the lake. We were going around the lake. Jeff had spotted it. Right wow. See this dead oak? Yeah. But when he found it, the tree was alive. It was broke off, but it was alive and that thing was packed in there. It's still there. I can see it, yeah. that was strange. There's no deer. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. No worries. There's no deer that comes through here at all. This is fell. This is fell. God, that's, that's the lens. When the tree was alive, I tried to pull it out. Jeff tried to pull it out. We couldn't get it. It's tight. But there's no chips in it. So it's perfectly... Yeah. If you had a rubber hammer, you could probably drive it in. But I don't know about... That tree was alive. And it was like forced in. How do you drive it in without breaking it? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I just, I, I don't get that. It'll probably come out now, though. It's now dead. that it's dead, yeah, and riding out. This is prime real estate, though, right here. A little swamp that leads yeah. to the bigger lake. That's where the, the trail would go around. I was walking it um, uh, about a year and a half ago, I guess. And something took off a scared guitar at him. It was a rabbit, and I took a few steps and the rattlesnake was right there, Bobby. Wow. Yeah, there's over by that big tree where that tree's fallen yeah to the right of it from over here that was a beach and there was a clump of grass and i sat there one night on a, what i thought was a live stream when i was first trying to figure out the, the youtube live stream yeah and i filmed it and they were up and i was explaining what i was seeing it yeah. looked like a big, large, very dark object covered in hair and a small one. They were like sitting down side by side. One was like that tall, one was pretty bulky. And I seen the arm come out and grab it and pull the little one over. And it was either food that something had. It wasn't a person, it just, the proportions were really out of whack. Mm -hmm. And I filmed it and finally I, guess I got creeped out real bad and I ended up going in. I said, you know, cutting live stream short, the next day it's got zero views on it. So it, it never up. Some kind of failure, yeah. Yep. And I didn't save it on my phone, so what, I didn't record it. I did through the live stream. Yeah. And I didn't upload it, so it was just, yeah. 
lost in limbo. Yeah, this this whole area is just been the, that little trail that we just passed. It's, it's somewhere right there. It's not there. I don't know. If it's you ever find any animal bones right here on the bank or anything? Well, actually, uh, we found one. Oh, well, there's an animal bone. Wow. What is that? That's crazy timing. That's a deer. Right here in nested in. It looks like a small deer. I don't know. It's kind of got like a whole a spot for a canine. So. We're here at a swamp near Donnie's and we just found a deer skull and some other. Oh, that was a spider. I was about to jump. <laughs> that is wild. Isn't that weird? Can't tell if it's been chewed on or not. It doesn't look My like maybe a, maybe a little bit. Oh, you can see, so, that may be rats or something. Yeah. But it looks like it's been very weather worn. Been out here a while. That's weird. So the drone something there. Got, maybe something got hit by a car, maybe? And then dragged off here, maybe? It is. I've never seen nothing like it. What does that track look like? It looks like a. The front looks like a dog. It's got. Kind of, I, I cannot draw at all just to give you an idea all right it had a, like a claw mark claw mark you know there's three claw marks definite toe three definite toes just like a dog you know it had the tote the pads and then it had like a sort of like a somewhat of a little pad right here but then back here it had like a golf ball like a perfect circle it was about that big is that about the size uh, a little bit smaller it was probably probably about that long overall about that wide well that's definitely no known canine no i just the claws the three claws were really dug in they're really deep in the ground and whatever it is was heavy on the toes because the toes were really Press in, you know, embedded in the ground. Yeah. And then the little ball part, like the little pad behind the foot, like behind our toe, it was mashed in pretty good. Hmm. But then that golf ball size, uh, it, it was like a void between the toe pad or the, the, I don't know what that part of the foot is behind the toes. Between that section and the heel, there was a gap with nothing, and then it was just a round dent about the size of a golf ball. But it seemed like whatever it was, it was really heavy on the toes. Like when it walked, they were really mashed in the ground. But I seen one, and then it's a bunch of pine straw, a few patches of sand, and probably 10 or 12 feet, there was another one. There was two of them. Mm. And Kim seen them. I don't even. Mm. So I can get a good, efficient shot. Yeah. But I, I don't go looking for them. I don't want any yeah. trouble from them. But in the beginning, I thought... I wanted to get evidence of them because I know what I've seen. I've seen it personally. Yeah. It was up, close. but something about having a picture of what I've seen, you know, it just um, more proof of what you've seen. Like, yeah, it helps it, you feel. It helps you cope. Self, um, self, something. Um, yeah. But it, anyhow, it's closure for yourself. Yeah, yeah, closure exactly. And so I was trying to understand. They're not an animal, but they're not a human. They're, they're something in the middle. They're beyond the capabilities of animals. They're beyond the capabilities of humans. So I, thinking outside the box, if you're going to get them, you got to think in ways that are not mm -hmm. normal for human. Yeah. And so what I've done, I took my game camera, and I, it's got four loops on it where you you put it on a tree, you hook your little cord to it, stretch it around the tree to where it has two cords. And so all four corners are secure. I took the cords off and I took a piece of string and I tied it to the corners, made me a little loop in the center, and I tied a rope or a string, a cord to it, to the very center where it was balanced. And I hung it, uh, this particular area, that you find trees that are bent like this. Yeah. But like this is natural, but you'll find them where they're not natural. You know, I'm out there all the time, I hunt that area. Yeah. And going every day of the week, come one day there's a tree bent over right in the way and you can't go down the same path you have to walk around mm. well i found one of them it was up fairly high and i got my threw my string up over it when it come down i made me a loop and i pulled 
that camera up and it, it was pretty high I could reach it but I could just get my fingers on the bottom edge of it okay and then I tied it off to the same branch that that where it looped like this I had it run like right here with the camera hanging and then I run the string over here and tied it all I do is untie it and it would the camera would drop I let it hang come back um, right before dark something come up grabbed the camera it was set for um, I think 15 second video it was video clips the camera starts recording it picks up a trigger it's lifted up and then it's turned like rotated out hmm. instead of filming what's walking under it it was turned to film away from it. and then it was moved line and then it was moved back then it's dropped it's kind of bouncing and doing its thing and you can hear crunching something moving away that night uh, I think it was two in the morning camera comes on it's facing the ground you can see the ground and it turns to the side then it's picked up and it was played with it was moved but it wasn't bouncing from an, a varmint or a bird it was moved somebody was handling it. you could hear it in the microphone <laughs> Where it yeah. was holding it, but it would like point it in a certain direction for like three seconds. It would just hold it there, and it just—I just had them that one clip in the day, and it was two or three, but they were back to back at two in the morning, and then it stopped, and you hear it walking away. Wow. The one during the day could have been a hunter playing a trick on me, but yeah. two in the morning, unlikely. Not out there. Uh, it's in the swamp, and I took the camera down, and I have not been to that area since. Wow. It's dried out. I bleached it. Um, the outside so it wouldn't get yeah. disease on it. But it wow. even dried out, I think it's probably three quarters of a pound or so. I would guess. Oh, for sure. It's heavy. And this tree broke. Here you go. Thank it you so high. much. Um, Thank you, man. This, where the tree was folded over, this was laid on top. And it was, it was out, I couldn't reach it. It was higher wow. than the roof right here. By, not by far, mm -hmm. but I found a stick, about a four foot stick, and I'm just able to Hook it out. keep bumping and bumping. I finally got it knocked down. I said, like, geez, it's big. That is crazy big. But where it's at, there's no farms. There's no reason that that would be a cattle bone. It doesn't look cattle. No, I found a cattle bone before. Yeah, I don't think it's like that. It seems too short. And, and it's too dense as well. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly thick. And it's definitely not a wild pig. It's like a femur bone. It looks like a dinosaur. I mean, look how thick it is. That's, the one end, um, I think this end is almost six inches. Um, yeah. Around it. And interesting enough, after we got done with everything at his place, we he he decided to invite us to go to his brand new property that he had acquired. And this is the hunting lease where he's had tons of different encounters with Bigfoot and crazy entities capturing orbs and portals on trail cams. Uh, there's been some really strange stuff that's happened out there. To be able to walk that ground and go out there and experience it was amazing. Unfortunately, it was the only part of the entire trip where, for some reason, the audio on the Osmo was completely ruined from the second I stepped foot on that property. Why? I can't explain it to you. Uh, I was using the same cables and the same camera and batteries and everything. Uh, the entire other part of the trip <laughs> so it was a little confusing it was definitely strange and this place is just full of high strangeness
So as we're walking through the property, we're hearing footsteps and tree breaks all around us. We're feel, getting feelings like we're being watched. And whatever the movement is, it's, it's just outside of what we can see visibly around us. The, the whole trip itself was just absolutely spooky out there. And eventually we got towards the creek into a place where the creek meets this really thick brush area that Donnie likes to call Jeff's Corner. And when we got there, uh, that's where I started getting sick. Started feeling a high level of anxiety and nauseous and just uh, like I had a headache too. I just couldn't explain what the phenomena really was, but man, not one of my favorite places to go back to. And kudos for to Donnie for always going out there and building this new property. That's great. It's it's just mind blowing to me. So after we had left and we had already went back home and I had even left the panhandle, uh, Donnie sent me an interesting video. And this video, without explaining it too much in depth, um, it's just strange, man. It's just more and more of the strange things that uh, can attest to how incredible the phenomena is up there. So what I found super interesting about this piece of footage is that Donnie was walking out there um, doing tree removal on the property and he's trying to get some of the stuff so he can eventually build his new home on this property and when he was walking out there one day he uh, he found these flags just all tangled up intricately through a live tree and it was just incredible it was mind-blowing there's nobody out there that could do something like this so what did it? Who knows? Stuck in the tree.
Maybe we didn't get as much evidence as we wanted to in the panhandle, but there's definitely grounds to go back and shoot more. And hopefully next time we'll be able to get some more things on film for you guys, but the stories themselves that have come out of here from two of my really good friends, uh, that's the treasure that I'll always carry with me. And I mean, you've heard of yourselves now. I'd like you to tell me that you wouldn't be interested in hunting panhandle monsters too. <laughs>